Hi, Gen Bio. Today we are going to be talking about dilutions, which is the second part of lab two, okay, week two's lab, okay? So you should have already watched video one. This is your second video for the week, and we're gonna look at solutions, what makes up a solution, concentrations, so how much of a solute is inside how much of a solution, a uh, solvent, and then dilutions, how to change the concentration of solutions to a less concentrated uh, solution, okay? So that's our topics. Those are our topics for this video, okay? Go ahead and play this. Okay, so a few definitions first. A solution is a liquid mixture composed of a solute that is dissolved into a solvent, okay? So you can see that. The solute is the substance that is dissolved. So for example, you could have salt. You could have particles of salt that you put into a solution of water. And in that case, salt would be the solute and water would be the solvent, okay? The solvent is the liquid that that solute is mixed up in. And together those make up a solution. Those are pretty simple definitions, right? Now, if we wanna get technical, we have to express our solution concentration in some way so that we can quantify that and we can use proper amounts for different types of experiments, okay? So a concentration describes the amount of solute that's dissolved in the amount of solvent, okay? And we can express this in several different ways. So I'm gonna move on to the next slide here. Um, you can express concentrations in terms of molarity, in terms of a weight per volume, or in terms of a percentage, okay? So we're gonna go through each of these. Molarity, when you're talking about the molarity of a solution, what that means is the number of moles of a solute in liters of solvent, okay? So a one molar solution of sodium chloride will be one mole of sodium chloride, of salt, dissolved in a liter of solvent, okay? And that's usually gonna be water, but it could be something else. Um, and then weight per volume is a particular weight. Usually we measure it in grams or uh, milligrams or micrograms, a variation of grams, um, in a particular unit of volume and it could be whatever you use. It could be 10 micrograms of sodium chloride in one milliliter, okay? So you should also, as I'm talking, be, be getting slightly familiar with the way that these volumes and weights are expressed. So if you look here at this little like U character, or sometimes it's more like a cursive M, here I'll draw it out here. Um, that is the symbol for micro, okay? micro. You can see it there. It's kind of like a curse of you. Um, that's micro versus the little m, just like a lowercase m like that, that's milli, okay? So you should start to recognize those, and we'll talk about those in a little bit more detail in the next slide as well. Okay, so weight per volume, the example we were looking at is whatever weight, when you weigh out your salt on the scale, you're gonna weigh that, and you're gonna say, okay, I'm putting 10 micrograms of salt into one milliliter of solvent, okay? Say water, all right? And then the third way that you can express a concentration is a percentage, okay? You'll often see something like 10% SDS, okay? And this is the weight of a solute in grams dissolved in the amount of liquid that brings the total volume up to 100 mils of solvent. Okay, so this is standard then for, for the percentage, 100 milliliters of solvent, okay? So you would just write 10% SDS if you took 10 grams of SDS and dissolved it into uh, the amount of liquid then that would bring up the total to 100 milliliters. So you want to be careful with this one. If you're ever making this solution in the lab, you don't want to start off by taking 100 milliliters of liquid first. You don't want to start off with that because when you go ahead and add your grams, when you add your SDS, 
that's going to bring the volume up past your 100 mils. What you want to do is add your solute first and then bring the total volume up to 100 mils. Okay, just if you ever have to make it. All right, so let's go to the next slide here and get a little refresher on our prefixes that we use in the metric system. So if you look at my graphic here, you can see that there's a base unit line. Let's start here, okay? So base unit in the metric system, we might use uh, meters to measure distance, grams to measure weight, liters to measure a volume, and then we can also throw in molarity, moles um, and molarity to measure concentrations, okay? Because I want you to understand that you can use these prefixes for each of the base units, okay? You are all probably familiar with kilo, right? Kilo is 1,000 of whatever your base unit is. So for instance, a kilometer is 1,000 meters, right? It's larger larger than a meter. Same with a kilogram, right? 1,000 grams, right? All right, so those are all larger. If you go up here, we've got kilo, mega, and giga, and they're 1,000, 1 million, and 1 billion times of the base unit, okay? In the lab, especially when we're talking about dilutions, we're often going to be looking on the other end of this um, graphic, however, where we're talking about smaller volumes. Um, so the same concept applies though, we're just going to have a fraction of our base unit. All right, so for instance, you heard me on the last slide say both milli and micro, right? A millimeter, you're probably familiar with at this point already, is one one thousandth of a meter, right? A milliliter would be the same thing, it's one one thousandth of a liter, right? Uh, milligram, same thing, it's one one thousandth of a gram, okay, and that would be a weight. All right, same applies to molar. It's one thousand times less concentrated than a one molar solution, okay. I'm gonna let that go, sorry. <laughs> um, and then a micro, a micrometer is a measure of size, distance, that is one millionth smaller than a meter, okay? So one millionth of a meter would be a micrometer, okay? Sometimes also called a micron. We can use that in terms of grams, liters, molarity as well. Um, but each of these uh, terms you really should become familiar with. So milli, micro, even nano, sometimes we use in our calculations in the lab. So if you know what they mean and you know how to calculate them, um, as far as you could just take one uh, thousandth of whatever your base number was, that would give you a milli uh, prefix, okay? All right, so if you have any trouble with that, just review this slide or ask me a question, shoot me a question, okay? All right. So now let's get back to uh, specific terms related to concentrations of solutions. So when we are in the lab, we might refer to a stock solution. A stock solution is the base solution that we have. It's usually highly concentrated so that it's available to dilute when we need a less concentrated solution to work with, okay? So that's referred to as the stock. The working solution then is the solution that we actually want to use in our experiment, which we might have to make from diluting our stock solution, okay? So the working solution um, is often what we're gonna use in our experiment. The dilution itself, that term obviously refers to the act of producing a less concentrated solution from a more highly concentrated solution, okay? So the less concentrated is gonna usually be our working solution from our stock, which is more concentrated, okay? And we would often express this as a ratio. So for instance, our working solution could be a one to five dilution of the stock, where the stock is five times more concentrated than our working solution, okay? So it's one, one fifth the concentration 
of the stock, okay? So for example, if the stock is 500 millimolar, so that's a concentration again, 500 millimolar, then, and we have a one to five dilution of that for our working solution, then we know that our working solution is gonna be 100 millimolar. So one part of the 500 of the one to five came from our stock solution, okay? So we have, and then when we brought that up with our diluent, the overall concentration of our working solution is 100 millimolar. And the dilution factor, that's another term we often use, dilution factor, is the fold difference. So how many times more concentrated is our stock than our working solution, okay? So we would often, if you look at this example again, and the dilution factor is the number that's going to be on the right-hand side of that ratio. It's five because the stock is five times more concentrated than our working solution. Okay, all right, let's move on to our next slide. All right, so when you are making a dilution, you might have a very simple dilution, like a one to 10 solution, okay? Where one part of your original is used, of, this, of the stock is used, and that's gonna be one of 10 total parts, okay? So one part is going to be your stock, and then you're going to add nine parts of your diluent, the whatever, it's usually water, again, whatever you use to bring up the total volume. And so you'll have a total of 10 parts. A one to 10 dilution is one of the stock and the rest, the nine of the diluent, okay? So for instance, you can just look at my, my um, quick little, I did a one to 10 dilution here. This was my stock and I took one part of that and I put it in here. And then I added then nine parts of water. And as you can see very clearly, this working solution then is less concentrated than my stock, okay? All right, and this could be, obviously doesn't have to be one to 10. It could be one to five, one to 1,000, one to 100. So in the case of it being a one to 100 dilution, you would, again, you take one part of your stock solution in this case, you have 100 total parts. So you wanna have, nine, you wanna add 99 parts of your diluent, okay? So water, whatever. Um, so you have a total of 100 parts. In that case, the dilution factor is 100. Again, the dilution factor is always gonna be the number on the right-hand side of your, of your ratio here, okay? And those are very simple dilutions. A serial dilution then is when you have a, you need to use in your experiment a dilution that is requiring a very small uh, volume of your original that maybe you can't even measure it. So for example, we had used pipettes um, last week and you might notice if you looked at your pipette that they, they don't all go down to um, very small numbers. So this one, for example, is the largest pipette we um, largest micro pipette that we have, and it only goes down to 100 microliters, okay? So if you needed 20 microliters, you could get a different pipette. But if you, if you can't even measure it out using a different pipette, then you, what you can do is to create serial dilutions, which are um, sequential dilutions that ultimately reduce the concentration uh, to what you need. If you can't measure out such a small volume to make the complete dilution that from in one step, then you can make a couple smaller dilutions, which will sequentially reduce the concentration. So I'm going to direct you to this picture here that will show you this. Um, so for example, in our, in our first picture here, you've got our stock and you would know the concentration of that because it would have been made and recorded previously. So your stock um, solution, you can take one part of that out and put it in your next clean test tube, and then add nine parts of your diluent. So in this case, we took one mil out of our stock and put it into a clean test tube and added nine mils of water. And so then what we have is a one to 10 dilution of our original, right? Now, if we take one milliliter of that and put it into another clean test tube, 
and add nine more mils of water, then you have a one to 10 dilution of this dilution, but what you actually have then is a hundred fold decrease in concentration from the original, because you took one to 10 and a one to 10 again. So ultimately that's a one to 100 of your full strength stock. And you can continue doing this. Take another one mil out, add nine more mils of water, okay? And that's gonna be a one to 10 dilution of this one, but it's going to be a one to 1,000 dilution of the original, okay? So each time you're reducing the concentration by 10, so 10 times 10 times 10 will give you a one to 1,000 and, and one to 10,000 for the last one, same concept, okay? So on and so forth, until you can finally make the concentration that you require for your experiment, okay? Let's move to our next slide. So for uh, lab today and, and for lab work this week, we would like you to work with these dilutions, get comfortable with the concepts of concentration and volume and how to make dilutions. So I'm gonna start you with this question right here. We're gonna do this one together. Um, there are other questions which you will do on your own, okay? So the problem number one that we're gonna do is you require 10 milliliters of a 0.1 molar solution of sodium chloride for an experiment, okay? You need 10 milliliters of 0.1 molar sodium chloride. That's what's going into your experiment. You already have in the lab, you've got a stock solution of sodium chloride, but it's one molar, okay? It's a one molar solution. Okay, so we know that we have a more concentrated solution than the one that we need. So the first question here, can you dilute your one molar solution to form a 0.1 molar solution? And the answer, of course, would be yes. We just have to dilute it, okay? Now, we need to know how much to dilute it by, right? So the next question, what is the dilution factor? The dilution factor, again, represents how much less concentrated your working solution is compared to your stock solution, okay? So we know our stock is one molar and we want a working solution of 0.1 molar. So how many parts, if you can think about this, how many parts would 0.1 be of one? And hopefully you can answer that. There would be 10 parts, right? 10.1s in a total of one, right? So then our dilution factor then is 10, okay? And to express the dilution as a ratio, we just put, put it, um, let me just show you here. We just put it in a, a ratio with a colon in the middle. Grab my where our working solution is gonna be one, or excuse me, our stock solution is gonna be one part of the total 10, okay? So that is our ratio representing the uh, dilution, one to 10, okay? So now here comes the um, next part, which is slightly more challenging, but we'll work through it. Assume that your diluent's water, Okay, you need to know how much volume of your stock, your one molar sodium chloride, do you take and how much water do you add to make then your 10 mils of 0.1 molar sodium chloride, which is what you want to work with, okay? So you need to know, you need to be able to figure out the volumes that you will need to use to make this, okay? So to find the volume of our stock, to take and to use to make the dilution. You express the dilution as a fraction, which is just rearranging the ratio that we already did, okay? You're gonna express it as a fraction and set it equal to the volume of stock, which we don't know, so we're gonna represent it with an X, over the total volume that we desire, okay? So if we flip it around then, our ratio, we're gonna then write it one, we express it as a fraction, one to 10, that's our dilution, okay? And we're gonna set that equal to 
x, where x is the volume of stock that we're going to take, we don't know it yet, so we want to find out, over the total volume that we want. We know we want 10 mils, milliliters, because it told us in the problem, right? We know that, okay? We want 10 mils. So now all you do is cross multiply, which I hope you remember, but if not, we'll, we'll do it. I'm gonna have to write smaller though, okay? So let me do this again. So one over 10 equals X over 10 mils, okay? And you probably did this in, in math class in the past, okay? So you just cross multiply, right? You multiply 10 times X, okay? So you write that down here, 10 X, is equal to 10 mils because all we're doing is multiplying 10 by x and 10 by 1. So this is a very simple one, but it gets a little bit more challenging. Okay. And then from there, you need to isolate x, right? So you divide both sides by 10 because you want to isolate x and get x by itself, right? So divide both sides by 10. And of course, then you find that x is equal to 1 milliliter, okay? And I worked you through that here too, in case you need to review. Um, 10x is equal to 10 mils, which is what I did just to start with here. 10x is equal to 10 mils over, take, uh, take the 10 out so that you can isolate x, and then you'll find x equals one milliliter of stock, right? Okay, now go back to your question and make sure you answered the whole question. Always, this is something I always tell my students, make sure you answered every part of the question because you might get to this point, I solved for X, I'm done. Go back and look, okay? Make sure you answer the whole question. So the question said, assume your diluent is water. What volume of your one molar sodium chloride will you add to what volume of water to obtain 10 mils of your 0.1 molar sodium chloride, okay? So we know how much stock we have, but we don't know how much diluent we have yet, the water, okay? But this one's pretty easy because we know, it said in the question, we want 10 milliliters total, right? And we know we have one milliliter of our stock, the rest is just gonna be water, okay? So it's really easy to answer. So you need nine milliliters of water to make that total 10 milliliters, okay? All right, let's move on to our next question then. I'm gonna change our view, there we go, okay. So you are, uh, this one I think is actually straight from your lab manual. So if you have your lab manual, you might want to pull it out. Uh, if it's, if they've changed it this year, we're just going to go over it anyway, just to make sure that we all know how to do these questions. But if it is the first one in your lab manual, um, pull it out and we can work through it together. Okay. All right. So you're newly hired in the lab and your procedure requires that you use 200 milliliters of 0.1 molar phosphate buffered saline, or PBS, okay? This is saline, it's often, it's, it's used in um, experiments often to, to buffer, as a buffer, okay? All right, so it's just a solution, just like any other. You need a 0.1 molar solution of phosphate buffered saline, and you know you want 200 mils of that. Now, that's what you want. Is not what you have. What you have, you find on the lab bench, PBS, but it's one molar, okay? So first you're gonna have to dilute that one molar solution to make a 0.1 molar solution, right? So what's our dilution factor? We again, if you look at these um, numbers, you need to first identify which ones are concentrations, which ones are volumes, what do we have? What do we want? Okay. So to answer the first question, what the dilution factor is, you need to first look at the question to find the two concentrations of the solutions of the stock that you have and the working solution that you want to make. Okay. So if you look then in your question, it says you have a one molar solution of PBS, right? That's your stock. You need that piece of information. You also need the concentration of your working solution, which it says in the question is 0.1 molar, right? So that's, we're kind of answering question number two before we answer question number one, because question number two says, what two pieces of information are necessary to find the dilution factor? 
Okay, those are the two pieces of information you need, the concentration of the stock and the concentration of the working solution, okay? And to get your dilution factor, you just need to divide your stock by your working solution, okay? You need to say how many times more concentrated is my stock compared to my working solution, okay? So obviously a one molar solution is 10 times a 0.1 molar solution, okay? This is just like the one we just did. Now those numbers will change, but to keep it simple, we're keeping it the same as the one we just used, okay? So one molar solution is 10 times more concentrated than a 0.1 molar solution. So we know then that our dilution factor is gonna be 10. Okay, so that's the answer to the first one. And the two pieces of information we used were the concentration of the stock and the concentration of the working solution. Okay, now it's also good to look at your question and identify if you have extraneous information, information that you don't need to answer a particular question. You might need it down the road, but for this first question, we didn't need to know the volume that we want. We didn't need to know that there are 200 milliliters uh, that we want in our, to use in our experiment. Okay, so that was extra at this point. Hold on. <laughs> Next slide. Okay, so I just copied the question at the top here, the same one we just um, we just looked at. So it's the same question. You're newly hired in lab. You want 200 mils of 0.1 molar PPS. Okay, you've got the one molar. Okay, so we answered the first three. Question number four, what volume of PBS are you supposed to make? Okay, the volume that you're supposed to make is given in the question, right? You want 200 milliliters, okay? So that's the next piece of information. Number five, how will you prepare this exact volume, the exact volume that you want, 200 milliliters, of 0.1 molar PBS, okay? So we're gonna do it the same way we did the last question. We're gonna put one over our dilution factor, which remember we just did, we, we converted it to a fraction from a ratio. We had a one to 10 dilution, and instead of writing it as a ratio, like this, we just flipped it and expressed it as a fraction, which is the same thing we're gonna do here, okay? So one every dilution factor, and we're gonna put that equal to X, which we don't know yet. That's what we wanna find out. That's gonna represent the volume of our stock solution, okay? Over how much we want the volume of our working solution. Okay, and actually I wrote microliters, but the question says milliliters. Be careful with that, okay? Let's, I'm just gonna give you a tip right now. I said at the beginning, there's a difference between those two symbols, micro and milli, okay? Be careful you don't mix them up because it will be marked wrong because they mean different things, okay? So make sure you write it neatly and clearly so that I don't think you mean the other one, okay? All right. So that's how you set it up, okay? So you have one to 10 set equal to X volume of stock over 200 milliliters. That's what you want for your working solution, okay? So again, you're just gonna cross multiply like we did before. So 200 times X and 10, or excuse me, 200 times one and 10 times X. So 10X, if you look here, 10X, multiply by your volume of, stock um, times 10, excuse me, 10X is gonna be set equal to 200 milliliters, okay? So you're cross multiplying, 10X is equal to 200 milliliters because you just have to multiply 200 by one, okay? So that's this line here. And then to find X volume of stock, you just divide both sides by 10, right? To isolate that X, and so you're gonna divide 10, by 10 and 200 by 10, right? And what you should get then is X is equal to 20 milliliters, okay? So that means you need 20 milliliters of your stock solution. Now again, make sure you go back to your question and make sure you answered it exactly. Sometimes they ask you um, for just how much stock you will use and sometimes they ask you for stock and diluent, okay? So how you prepare this exact volume of 
0.1 molar PBS. So you'll need 20 milliliters of stock and you'll need the rest of that 200 milliliters of water, okay? So the rest would be obviously 180 because 200 milliliters minus 20 is gonna be 180 milliliters, okay? Okay. So now there are more questions in your lab manual, which you will work through on your own. Um, but obviously if you struggle, let me know and I will absolutely help you. So for, to kind of wrap things up, I have uh, listed here today's lab, which included the first video. So you're gonna design, set up, and complete the cell bug experiment. You're gonna analyze it using a chi-squared test. And then you're gonna work through dilution questions in your lab manual and take home some extra problems, okay? And if you're really struggling um, conceptualizing dilutions, I have included two extra slides. This is just if you can't, if you're having trouble with what we've talked about so far, I've included some equations. Basically listing, if you need to find your dilution factor, this is exactly what you do, okay? If you need your dilution factor, take the concentration of the stock solution and divide it by the concentration of the working solution, okay? If you need to find the volume of stock to be used, you can conceptualize it the way we just talked about, but basically to simplify that, you take your desired volume of the working solution, how much you want for your experiment, and divide it by your dilution factor. And that'll give you how much stock to use. Now you still might need to find out how much diluent to add to bring it up, but to start with, you take your volume of stock um, and you could find that by taking your volume of working solution that you want and divide it by your dilution factor okay and then the last one if you need to figure out your dilution concentration take your stock concentration and divide it by the dilution factor okay so these are just a couple equations that if you really struggle just memorize the equations okay but try to conceptualize it first, okay? All right, so if you were to go through the question that we just did, the first one that we did together, um, where you needed 10 mils of a 0.1 molar solution of sodium chloride and you had a one molar solution of sodium chloride, you, this is just word for word what we did before, but it's a different way. So divide how much you want. You would take your equation. If you need to find the volume of your stock, you would divide how much you want in the end, which it tells you in the question. It says 10 milliliters, okay? The final volume for your working solution. Divide that by the dilution factor, which we established was 10, okay? And then you'll find that uh, 10, again, divided by 10 would equal one. And one milliliter then was the amount of stock to use. And of course, then you need to bring that back up with nine milliliters of water to get your total 10 mils for the experiment. Okay, so that's just another way to do it if you weren't clear, um, but one of these two ways hopefully will work for you. And if you do struggle, obviously shoot me an email or I'll see you in lab this week. All right, so have a great week and I will see you soon. Take care.